I have spent like all day in the kitchen. And you know what? I'm pretty happy about it. You know what I'm also happy about? The fact that my birthday is coming right up and I feel like your birthday is at the time of year that you need to treat yourself to exactly what you want, namely food, because that's how I treat myself. One of my favorite things to eat, whether it's at home on a Sunday when I'm having cheat day or when I'm on a trip and I can't find food that I can eat, almost every of the time I am finding myself indulging in chips. I love potato chips. More specifically, I love these. And I feel like, you know what? No, you can stay. You can stay right here. That was probably dirty. I feel like Lay's chips, just classic Lay's chips, party size, by the way, because this weekend I'm having a birthday party. And honestly, even if I wasn't, I would be getting party size. I feel like the original or classic, or as some people like to insultingly call it, plain Lay's chips, I feel like they don't get enough love. Not happy about that. This chip is so good that you don't even need flavor. And honestly, I'm, I'm a proponent of plain flavored chips beyond Lay's. I like, I just like plain chips. I don't know. For my birthday party this weekend, I bought a lot of chips. I'll just, just come with me, okay? I'll, I'll take you with me. Well, these aren't all of them. <laughs> Hopefully I've conveyed to you how much I appreciate chips. And one thing I've never actually tried my hand at making myself are chips. I've made french fries. I think I've made tater tots. I've done a lot with potatoes. I've made hash browns. I've even done like potato pancakes, but I've never made chips. And I feel like it's such an easy recipe to do. So why not try it? In the spirit of treating oneself on one's birthday or honestly on any day and doing very simple recipes, because you know what? Last week we took a ride together. It was a bumpy, bumpy, banana peel ride. To get back on the horse, we need to slow it down and make something that we know we can trust to taste good and not betray our taste buds. And frankly, just like an easy thing to make. I bought four russet potatoes. Actually, I bought a whole bag of them, but here are just four of the russet potatoes. There's a couple steps to it. Pretty much the goal is to slice them super thin. Then you want to put it in water with salt. And I think the water should be cold to sort of firm up the pieces of potato and then also to draw the moisture out. Then after they're dry, and you just deep fry them in a pan. And then at the end, I thought it would be fun to have Jenna take a blind taste test, which she's definitely gonna pass because there's no way on my first try at this, I'm gonna make anything near as good as that, but you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And you know who said that, so let's get started. I think one part of being in the kitchen like all day long and filming cooking videos all day is uh, you are exhausted. I am exhausted and I forgot to even mention my new getup, courtesy of my wonderful girlfriend, Jenna. She bought me an executive chef uniform for our home known as the Aries Kitchen. I have the hat. I even have pants, but I took them off because I way too hot to wear in this kitchen. So if you guys weren't on board with the, uh, the cooking theme happening on this channel, now it is official. <laughs> so run for the hills. We have clean potatoes and we need to skin them. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do it really quick so you don't have to watch, okay? I'm gonna skin these right in front of your eyes. See, that was way more painless than you having to watch me do that. No one wants to watch that happen. Now I'm gonna try to just mandolin slice them up, get them nice and thin and nice and good looking so I can eat them. Okay, one thing about starches is it's important that you wash them before you do the cooking because there is a lot of starch on potatoes, rice, things like that, that when you clean it off, it does a better job cooking and it's a, it's a cleaner finish. There's not, it's not starchy, you know what I mean? It's crisp, it's just the flavor and the texture that you want. So I'm gonna wash all of the little uh, sliced potatoes that I have now from the mandolin. And then once I'm done with the wash, I'm gonna pop them in to a little salt water bath. Which sounds weird as hell, but it's a cold little bowl of water with salt in it. And hopefully what it'll do, I'm gonna leave it there for like 20 minutes is draw a lot of the moisture out of the potato slices. Enough time has passed to where I have lost patience and I'm ready to proceed. I would guess it was probably like 17 minutes. I'm just going to let these lay out on paper towel. And what I'll do is I'm gonna leave a couple in that bowl soaking while we do this first batch. And maybe if I'm feeling like it, I'll test them afterwards to see if soaking them longer makes a difference. We are gonna pour some oil into the pan. And then one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one popcorn kernel and I'm gonna drop her in to the oil because when that thing pops, we are ready to fry. 
while we're waiting for the oil to heat up. That is such a good taste. I'm trying to think of an original flavor of anything that tastes that good. Maybe Gatorade, maybe lemon lime Gatorade. I'm literally just gonna fry them for like two minutes and then salt them and then let them cool. And then we're gonna do the taste test for me first and then to see if Jenna tastes the difference, which I'm assuming she can, but you never know, dude. Crazier things have happened. Oh, that was the popcorn kernel. This is wild looking. And I think my camera's fogging up. These don't look like anything I've ever fried before. They're just so thin, like I can even see through them. All right, I'm gonna start flipping them. It's been about a minute. I don't think you technically need to flip them because they're so thin that they're like cooking on both sides simultaneously, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. What do you and your outfit cooking in the kitchen? You like it? What do you think? Which one looks like the real thing? Um, this is called I Tried by Julen. I'm gonna actually taste one. You don't get to taste it yet, okay? Okay, cover your eyes. Here's what we're gonna do, okay? I'm gonna give you one chip, the first piece for you to taste, and don't say anything until you taste the second one, okay? Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Second one coming up. That you can't even tell. Oh, they do taste very similar. I think the first one was the Lay's. The second one tastes a lot more like a potato. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Because no, it tastes like a, like a potato chip you would get at a restaurant that's made yeah, in house. Yeah, like you pay extra for homemade chips. Because somebody. These are good. How'd you get these so thin? Like they taste, the thinness is almost the same. Mm. Really good. Really? I didn't think you were going to get it to taste like that. It tastes better than you thought it was going to? Okay, all right, well, Jenna likes the chips. I guess that's, that's a win. Now we're gonna get crazy. Oh. Now we're gonna fry these chips, or these potatoes, I should say, that have been soaking for probably twice the amount of time as the first batch. Here we go. What do you think? I think he likes it. So this is the batch that soaked extra long and it looks pretty much the same. I'm gonna try one. It's really hot, I'm gonna wait. Okay, I've waited long enough. It's hard to taste the difference between the second batch and the first batch. The, the chips don't look alike. But here's what I'll say about this recipe. They are delicious and they taste fresh, which is, Really nice because it's like making french fries at home. You could go get them at the drive-thru and they're really good. They're always gonna be good. But when you make it at home with like potatoes that you bought and washed and cut, it has a certain freshness to it. So this is something that I would definitely make again. It tastes like, you know, you're at a restaurant and you order the house-made chips and you receive the hot ones that probably look just like this and just got out of the fryer and you're like, damn, glad I went with the chips. So to conclude, did I recreate Lay's classic chips perfectly, no. I knew I wasn't gonna do that. But this is my own spin on it. Actually, it's not mine at all. This isn't original. This is literally just the same three ingredients, potatoes, salt, and oil, and I just did it at my house. So that's why it's mine. But these are good, 10 out of 10. Would make these again, even though they look burnt as shit. It's okay. Anyway, I hope this recipe gave you something. If you're considering trying making chips, it is so easy. I can't even tell you how easy it is. I'd say go for it. Just be careful with the oil and thank you to everyone who watched this video and for hanging out and for encouraging me to cook more on this channel because it has been so fun for me. Also, thank you so much for the birthday wishes and a special shout out to everyone um, who saw and responded to in some way, shape or form my Instagram story post uh, from last night. It, you guys are the best. I'm so lucky to have an audience like you guys. So thank you very much. I am gonna go eat a bunch more chips than I ate right now throughout the weekend and I'll see you guys on the next one. Okay, I heard you were crying and I know what you're trying to say is that, Father, you did a great job making those potato chips. May I taste another one? So here you go. Will you just do it right into my mic, please? Oh God, so nasty. Oh man. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.